Hey guys, welcome back. Moriyama does it again. Another gold in his pocket. It was unfortunate that Abe Hifumi had to pull out from this event. It would have been good to see those two continue their rivalry, but nonetheless, we've got some exciting stuff from Moriyama. Probably not as a good a, a performance as his World Championships. Uh, his World Championship silver medal. That was that was quite spectacular, but. Some good things in here and also some some close calls there are a couple of scores that i think should have gone against him but for some reason it's just the camera angle the camera angle looks really bad uh from this perspective but i don't know i really wanted to see like from from the other this is one of them right here this here i mean maybe he had his elbow out but we can't really see and then standing up again we'll have a look in slow motion so this attack here Potential Wazari. Hard to see from the camera angle. And then standing up like this, I think I think the idea is if you're in Newaza and you stand up, the ref has to call Mate, but he didn't call Mate and you can't just go from Newaza into Tachiwaza. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure. So a nice Tomoinage attempt here that was really probably more so than his Uchimata, the technique that kind of, you know, carried him through uh, this Grand Slam. I mean, in other tournaments, people would have gone flying from that Uchimata right there, so... Not quite sure, his Uchimata had an off day, but... I mean, he still managed to get the job done. Unfortunately, his, uh, his opponent here, Kuanov, from Kazakhstan, dropped down, and that was a Shido. So we're into round three now. Against Cheng from Taipei. And if anyone knows, I don't know if there's any people from Taipei who watch my channel but I, I feel like that the team the the Taipei team I feel like they they train a lot in Japan I know uh, Yang does he's here quite a lot but I want about the rest of them and they do have really good judo it looks kind of you know traditional in the sense very Japanese like so I wonder if they spend a lot of time here there's that Uchimata again and I mean, it's just kind of surprising not to see people go flying when Maruyama goes in for an Uchimata. But, I mean, that was the trend for today. And, and Maruyama's got this little shuffle that he does to set up his Tomoinage. I'm going to point it out. Wait for it right here. And so people know the Tomoinage is coming and then mixing that up with the Uchimata is just a such a great, you know, pairing of techniques that Uchimata and the Tomoinage because the way he goes in for the entrance very similar so nothing controversial there but here in the quarterfinal against Tanaka Ryoma and Tanaka, if you if you didn't see the the selection tournament that they have in April, Moriyama threw him with a ridiculous Uchimata so I think Tanaka's probably thought about this matchup quite a bit thought about, you know, how to approach it, how to deal with that Uchimata. I'm not sure if this was one of his options or not, but I mean, this ended up happening and I liked it. I thought this is a great score. He did well to put his hand above the belt. Moriyama does well here to defend in the Neowaza, but they give Tanaka Han Sokomake for head diving. So I'm not going to disagree that it isn't head diving, but it doesn't look too dangerous. Tanaka's okay, it was his choice. He decided to do it. He probably does it all the time, so... Unfortunate, very unfortunate for Tanaka and Moriyama walks out of that contest. Into the semi-final, so... A little bit of controversy on the way. In this match here against Yondon Perenlai, I do also think there was a another potential score or at least Yondon Perenlai is just kind of unlucky because of how the rules are and you see here so he's trying to take advantage of when Maruyama goes in for the Uchimata and Yondon Perenlai was just looking for that throughout the whole contest see he's looking for it here he's trying to catch him before he gets to the ground so he can counter him if it goes to the ground and then he rolls him over can't do that, there's no score. And you see here, if you watched my video on Mashiyama, Bekouri did this a lot 
to Mashiyama, and Mashiyama just went in for a Seonage. Picked Becca Udi up and dumped him. But Mariyama doesn't have that, that technique in his arsenal, so... You know, just, just forced to kind of stalemate, but... In this next exchange, he, he kind of figures figures out something to do. Putting the foot across, going for the Tomoenage. Barely enough for an attack, I guess. Here's Yondon Perenlite again. Looking to try and capitalize off that, that grip around the back. Okay, so this one here... I do like it as a Wazari. And I'll tell you why. So watch, Moriyama, what he does is... See him just put both his hands together and dive towards the mat? So I mean, that there, that's fear, right? That's fear that your technique is... Is not working and someone else's is, and so I think Yondo and Perrin like had something going. Maybe it stopped, stopped on the ground, and then, then there was another successive movement, and so they couldn't give the score there. But Mariyama again gets lucky, lucky on the scorecards. So after this, Mariyama just ends up putting in a couple of good attacks, looking for that Uchimata, looking for that. Tomoinage. And there was enough to seal the deal, get another Shido against Yondon Perenlai's name. Not a score. Not a score, but enough. That was the the attack that sealed the deal. Unlucky for Yondon Perenlai. Right, so this is the, the final now. And it's against Hattori. Hattori, very young. Young kid, so, I mean, basically looking across the tatami at a legend. I'm sure they've trained together at some capacity at some point. But Mariyama just demolished him in a very short time. I think it was about 50 seconds. But Hattori, he came out aggressive, was looking for things. How sharp does he look? <laughs> he comes out to the uh, former world champion there. And, uh, and you'll see that step that Mariyama does to go into his Tomoenage. But Hattori pushes him backwards. And Mariyama uses that momentum. And instead of stepping on his back foot, he just slides it, slides it through, and goes for the Tomoenage. So... From Hattori's perspective, he thinks he's going to plant that foot and step backwards. You know, kind of push in, push into him. But that does not happen. Look, here it is. There. And Mariyama is so good at disguising that foot. It's either planting on the ground or it's sliding through for the Tomoenage. It's really, really excellent stuff. So there'll be some replays uh, coming up in a couple of seconds, but what do you think guys? What do you think about those scores? Or scores that could have been against Moriyama? I'm sure one of them could have been a Wazari. But nonetheless a good performance by Moriyama. He's just so good at this. So good at Judo. Watch him. See that foot? Let's see if we can get another angle of it here. I honestly hate this. I hate it when they zoom in too close and you can't see people's feet. I mean, what good of an angle is this? Come on. Anyway, guys, rewind it a little bit. Have a look. See what he does with that foot. All right, peace out.